Good afternoon, welcome to today on Bay TV. We are live in Swansea on Friday, 5th of May 2017. I'm Henry Darby Cook, this is Gaynor Morgan. And guess who are joining us on the sofa today? <laughs> We've got Rob Stewart and Carwin No Sleep Evans <laughs> with us. But before we chat to them, let's have some music from Tom Williams. How to start a show. Now today only one thing dominates and that's the local elections. Rob, you must be a happy man. Very, Ta very happy indeed, yes. Uh, and Carolyn, a very sleepy man. Yes, yeah, but uh, I don't know if it's the same sort of enjoyment as, as Rob went through last night, but no, it's, a, it's an enjoyable occasion and 
the just the, the adrenaline rush really from from seeing the ballot uh, boxes arrive uh, at at the count to then waiting uh, for, for for those results to come in. And the buzz it's... of being there. Now, now, Rob, you were really in the front line. Mm. A great friend of this program program in your role as um, leader of Swansea. And, um, of course, Labour has held on to Swansea, and you've held on to your ward. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, it's, uh, it's, it was a great result for us. I mean, we went into the election 47 seats. We increased our majority. I think we're the only uh, Labour authority in the UK to increase its majority. Um, but more importantly, we've, in, in the wards that we had fought really hard, wards that we've never won before, we've taken some of those but also we've upped our vote in other areas of the city. So really, we fought a very local campaign. We fought it on the city deal, we fought it on Tidal Lagoon, we fought it on the city of culture, we fought it on all of the regeneration that we're proposing for the city centre. And I think that's resonated with people. It wasn't a negative campaign. It was a positive campaign of hope, saying that there is a better way forward. And you're being a bit modest uh, for a politician. <laughs> you had an enhanced majority in your ward, Morriston, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was... It was I, I don't know whether you can read it across directly, because... It's different in the local elections because we didn't have people like the Lib Dems standing against us in that ward, which changed the dynamic a little bit. But, no, very pleased. I mean, they were, we, we were resounding victors in Morriston. And, uh, you know, we've worked very hard for over 30 years in Morriston, uh, you know, to try and improve the area. And, and you know, people recognise it's easy on the doorstep if you're there every day. So how did your night go? What was the plan of action? When did it start? And at one point I was going to Clidder to... Uh, I'm looking after my girlfriend's parents' dogs at the moment and I saw you and Mike on the side of a polling station having a good laugh, Mike Hedges. Yep. So were you here, there and everywhere? Yeah, I mean, uh, as leader as well, because, of course, I was fighting a, a campaign across the authority, I tried to get to nearly every ward to support our candidates. And, and you know, we had a really, really strong team. And I want to pay tribute to the candidates that, you know, ones who were selected and elected last night, but those people who fought valiantly but just didn't, didn't get, get there it. because, you know, I feel so sorry for them this morning. They, they, they poured their hearts out into that shattered, camp campaign. Yeah. But, no, I mean, it's one of those things. You've got to try and be everywhere and you, do, you take no seat for granted. And we said at the beginning of the campaign we were going after every seat and that's what we did. Now, how does it work? Do you get voted back in as, lab, as leader? What, what, what happens? Yeah, so, um, I mean, the, the group, the Labour group, now the 48 Labour councillors who've been uh, elected will select the leader. Um, we ran a ballot in the run-up to the election and um, um, I was the only one to put my name forward and, uh, you know, the, I'm very pleased with the group for their support, so I'm elected and opposed. Uh, and we'll be selecting the new deputy leader tonight because uh, Christine Richards, who I know you've had on the programme a number of times, um, has decided she, uh, you know, what, doesn't wish to reset, uh, reseek selection as deputy leader uh, for personal reasons, um, but she's been an outstanding deputy leader. She'll continue to be a great voice in the, in the Labour group and work hard for her uh, community of Lower Lacha. Tarwin, how did the night unfold? Because um, Labour's perceived to have not done at all well um, in the UK, um, and yet has held on to the three major cities in, in Wales, Le uh, Newport, obviously, Cardiff and, and uh, Swansea. It's quite ironic, really. So you sort of hear about um, losses that Labour have had across the UK, but then, uh, as Rob was saying now, in, in Swansea, they've not only uh, gained seats, but they've also gained votes. And I think it... It says a lot about how um, Rob and the Labour Group have worked uh, over the last uh, uh, term then, and um, maybe also people's voting patterns changing with uh, the influence of um, Jeremy Corbyn as, as the Labour Party's leader, and obviously the snap elections coming in, well, just in a, in a month now or so, and if people might have been slightly influenced by, by by what's happening nationally when it comes to local elections? You'd like to think not, because obviously it's it's two different um, groups and two different elections, but um, it, it's hard to know how, how people are sort of thinking with everything that's happened politically in sort of the last 18 months or so. Did the night pan out as, as was expected, do you think? Um, it's, it's hard to say, really, as in, you sort of look at, uh, just in so South Wales and Pied Cymru, I was talking to um, Bethan Jenkins shortly after 11 last night, and she was sort of saying that Applied had, had put a, a good campaign in, in Neath and Patalbert, but she wasn't expecting uh, to make any gains, and, and they almost doubled the, their seats uh, in the county, and then sort of maybe look at, um, at Swansea, and obviously... Uh, Labour have gained a seat, Lib Dems have lost five, and I, I don't know, it's it's it's, well, it's fascinating. What about Carlton, always closely fought very quickly? Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's closely fought, obviously the results are still happening. Uh, last I heard, Plaid were, were slightly ahead, but 
obviously there's still a lot of, of, of counts to happen there. That's great. And you were all over the place, weren't you, last night? <laughs> yes, Here, there and yeah, everywhere. Yeah, travelled a bit too much, maybe, but no, I had a, had a great <laughs> In evening. In the best enjoyment. tradition. <laughs> Thank you both. After the break, Rob's going to be staying with us and we're going to invite Craig Lawson to the sofa. Look forward to seeing you then.
Welcome back to Today on Bay TV. I'm Henry Darby Cook. This is Gaynor Morgan, and we're now back with Rob Stewart and Craig Lawson. And shall we talk about everything that's happened in the early hours? I think we should introduce you properly first, um, Craig. You're a Conservative um, agent and possibly a Conservative candidate? At this stage, yeah, I was the uh, agent for uh, most of the Conservative candidates in Swansea and Gower last night. Uh, I wrote our manifesto as well. I was our candidate in the Assembly election last year in Swansea West. Um, but not a candidate as we speak. Uh, I think the party Watch is... Watch space, is it? Well, I think, I think you know, <laughs> there's a, the party is uh, making decisions mm. at the moment. They're looking at the rest of the results across the country. Mm. Once they've done that, uh, we'll, we'll crack on with uh, sorting out the general election. Of course, Rob Stewart, a great friend of the programme and, once again, leader of the City Council. So. Before we go any further, should we have a little look at Rob's acceptance speech from last night? Well, the earlier hours of this morning. <laughs> just a few things I wanted to put on record tonight. First of all, my thanks to the staff who worked so tirelessly through the night to make sure all of our accounts were done effectively. It's been a really tough job. Thank you very much. Se secondly, on behalf of my colleagues, to all of the voters in Morriston who have again put their faith in us. We faced a very negative and nasty campaign in Morriston from the Tories. Um, we at least faced a campaign in Morriston. Many of you had paper Tories who got votes tonight for doing no work, because the Tories offer nothing to Swansea. And I understand, without Hugh finishing off his uh, announcements, I understand we are shortly to be the only Labour authority in the UK to increase its majority. And that is thanks to... <laughs> came into this election offering hope, offering the people of Swansea a better life. We've delivered the city deal, we're going after the Tidal Lagoon, we're going after the city of culture, and we will deliver those things in the next few years. We have a very, very strong Labour team returning to this council and we will make Swansea better. Well done to you all, let's get out there and let's do it for Swansea. <laughs> You almost looked surprised, Rob. Were you surprised or relieved? Or... Oh, that, that was about 6am this morning. I was, <laughs> I was, I was running on fumes at that point in time. But no, look, it was a great result. And we knew probably about two hours before that we were heading in that direction, but we just didn't know the exact number. Um, because, of course, they do all the verification before they do the final count. So we knew roughly where we were, but, you know, it was just great to get over the line and uh, get it secured. A negative, nasty campaign by the Tories, Chris. Craig. Craig. <laughs> Have you been away for a long time? I think we've all been up for a bit too That's long. Probably the problem. <laughs> Sorry, Craig. Um, look, across the whole of Swansea, I, yeah, I pride myself on the work that our candidates have done and all of our campaigners have done. We've worked really hard. We've shown that there is an alternative to Labour in Swansea. Uh, individual candidates will campaign on individual issues that they see relevant in their wards. And I thought it was important to let our candidates have the freedom to talk to people about the issues that they thought were important to them. But across the board, I'd like to think that our manifesto uh, and the ideas we put forward for the whole of Swansea were, were very positive indeed. Talking about one of your candidates, Anthony Miles, obviously, last night did well. We've got a clip. Should we have a little look now? Absolutely delighted. Absolutely delighted to be elected. Obviously, it's my home area. Um, and it was only achieved through a, a, a lot of hard work and, uh, you know, over a long period of time. And, uh, you know, obviously delighted to get, to get in and now the hard work begins. Um, I think it's a, a lot down to uh, the hard work we're putting in locally. Uh, I think people are seeing the message we're putting across, uh, certainly in Mumbles. I've got, I've got a plan for what I want to achieve in Mumbles, uh, a clear vision of the potential that Mumbles can, can fulfil. And I think that's what voters voted for when they were going out, uh, certainly to vote for myself. And across Swansea, I think there is a conservative vision for what Swansea can become. And I think people are, um, you, know, you know, seeing the potential in that and they want to, um, want to support it. So it, yes, there is, there is a, a national trend, but uh, I think locally we're doing the job as well. You know, I, was, I was elected on uh, essentially trying to make Mumbles uh, as best it can be. We, it needs to be uh, an even better place to live, work and visit. And uh, I think there's a huge amount of potential that Swansea can, uh, certainly Mumbles, can uh, live up to. My, my turn to correct the name there. Go on then. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what, what's his name, Craig? Sorry. So it's, uh, it, he won't forgive me if I don't correct it. It's Miles Anthony Langston, so Miles Langston. That's <laughs> I just enjoyed picking it up. <laughs> so, good night. 
Yeah, we're really pleased. You know, Miles is is just one of an exa of, of a number of examples of really good new young uh, members and councillors that we've got coming through that I think the party uh, can can pin their hopes on for a long time. Been working very hard in their own communities as well. Bridget Rowlands, another example of someone who uh, wasn't even really involved in politics a couple of years ago, um, stood for community council just because she liked her area of Maud and she wanted to stand up for it. Uh, she saw the hard work that Byron Davis was doing across Gower and, and North Swansea, uh, and she's since joined the party. And, you know, I think we're going to go from strength to strength. I'm pleased with the gains we've got. But if you look away from the gains as well, I think our vote is up across Swansea. There are places that people said the Conservatives would never do well in Swansea, and we've done very well in those as well. So there are no no-go areas for the Conservatives UK, now. UKIP's been wiped out, really, hasn't it? Is this what this has all been about? And does it mean now that uh, the Tories are going to be even more right-wing? Uh, not at all, not at all. I think if you look at our policies in Swansea, we've been very forward-thinking. We care about the city. We want to see what happens about the city. Um, I can't speak for why UKIP didn't put candidates forward. I can honestly say, actually, this is the first time I've mentioned the word UKIP in a while. We've been focusing on ourselves in this campaign. We've been focusing on what we can do in our individual wards and what we can do in Swansea and how we can hold the Labour Council to, uh, to account and how we can give people a real alternative, which I think they've got now. Rob, do you think um, the, the drift on the news, as I caught it this morning, was that, that Labour had really done very, very badly and can't really come back from, from the dark place you've been? And yet you've, you've held Swansea with the most increased... What was it, the most increased lead in the UK? We are, we're, the, we're the only Labour control council to increase its majority, yeah. And you obviously you've held um, Cardiff, our capital city, and Newport. So... Where does the balance lie? Well, look, I mean, if you look at the figures, just before I came out, out of the House this morning, I was looking and we were, we were down about 60-odd seats and the Tories implied were up the equivalent amount. So it's clear there's been a bit of a shift between the parties there. Uh, as you said, UKIP is nowhere. Uh, I think they're a spent force, but I think many of their people, many of their supporters, just gone back to the Tories because that's mm. roughly who they were anyway. Job done. Um, you know, job done. They're a single-issue party. They had no policies on the NHS, on all of the other things that matter to people in their lives. And, uh, you know, I'm pleased to see the end of UKIP because I think they were an awful uh, advert for British politics. Well, I, the whole idea of, of UKIP was, obviously, for us to leave Europe, and that's happening. So what can they do moving forward, I guess, is what people will say. I think people are probably looking forward now to the general election. What, what really? messages... <laughs> <laughs> More campaigning. Yeah. But what messages can we take from the local elections? Look, I think uh, for us, uh, locally, I know um, we have said for some time there is an alternative to what the Tories are offering, which is you don't have to have austerity, you don't have to have food banks, you don't have to be living in poverty, there doesn't have to be a privileged few taking the most over the, the impoverished more. So uh, there is a different way forward, and that's what we've fought on locally, that's what we've done in Wales previously, and I think that's the message that will continue. Um, you know... <sighs> I just hope that the people out there don't see this as a personality contest. They see it as what type of future they want for their, themselves, their children, their families. Is that because... what's happened in Sketty? So a few shocks in Sketty, as I think we can mm -hmm. um, see on the VT now. Yeah. So we might not agree on much, but the three things on which we will agree. First of all, now is not the time for long speeches. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> we'd like to add our thanks uh, to all those involved. And thirdly, is that as Peter has said, we'll all be working for the benefit of Sketty. I'd like to thank uh, the fellow candidates, um, uh, those who took part, and also I'd like to thank those who've been standing down, particularly Jim Stanton and Paul Mira, who've given a great deal of service to the people of Sketty. And uh, also to Hugh Rees, who's uh, not been elected on this occasion. But thank you everyone for your time and your forbearance, and we will do our best for Sketty. <laughs> So obviously, Rob, Sketty Award you've never held, Labour's never held. How important is that? Yeah, and look, we were really close on to getting more than one councillor there. Um, and again, you know, the guys fought a fantastic local campaign. Uh, but I think, you know, there was an upsurge, as there was across the country, in, in uh, Conservative Tory votes. Uh, that was no doubt an and impact. And that was the first Lib Dem to, to win in Sketty, yeah? No, the Lib Dems oh. have held that award. They had right. five councillors there before the election, so really they've gone from five to two. Um, but there was a, an uplift, as, as we've said, you know, because of, I think, more because of the general election uh, and the overlap of the campaigns. Had we, have, I think, had a purely local uh, election there, uh, I think you'd have seen a different result. In the final moments, Craig, obviously we've seen a swing. We, they were predicting a swing. Is this just what's to come for the general election, do you think? 
well, to strengthen the Conservatives? Well, I think locally we campaigned on local issues, but a lot of people were talking about Theresa May and the work she's doing and how she's going to secure that strong, stable government and make sure Brexit works for the whole of the UK on the doorstep. And that's something we can't help. As I say, I think we've seen there are no no-go areas for the Conservatives now in Swansea or in Wales, and we're going to continue to work hard. Thank you both. Uh, next, we're going to keep Rob with us, and Christina Rees is going to come and join us. See you then.
Welcome back to Today on Bay TV. I'm Henry Darby Cook and this is Gaynor Morgan. And we're back with Rob Stewart and Christina Reese has joined us. And let's talk about... What should we talk about? Last night's elections, possibly? <laughs> now, <laughs> Labour had a good night, as we know, in Swansea, Cardiff and, of course, Newport. But, Christina, if we can start with you. Across the board, across the country, you haven't done well enough, have you? It doesn't augur well for the general election. I think in Wales we've done very well. And the predicted swing to Tories hasn't happened in Wales. And we've had some tremendous results. In Flintshire, we've gained three Labour seats. But across the UK, really, Labour hasn't come back enough from its dire position, has it? Well, the results are still coming in, Gainer. And in Wales, they're still coming in as well. Carmarthen Share accounting this morning, Sora and Morn, the results are still coming in. Only 13 of the 22 were counted last night. So you're confident about winning the election? I'm very happy. Do you know me, Gainer? I'm always positive. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, but that's the point. You're always positive. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, I, I won't um, say that it's going to be easy, but we'll be out there fighting for every vote. And that's what we should do, because we respect the people, we respect democracy. Rob, you personally and in Swansea had a, a very good night, a very good election. But I repeat the question, it doesn't all go well, really, for the Labour Party uh, come the general election. Look, we, we're, we're behind in the polls at the present time, but, you know, you look at what's been announced uh, nationally in terms of policies, you know, uh, giving an increase to the NHS staff, you know, um, dealing with uh, zero-hour contracts, dealing with poverty, you know, um, putting more police on our streets, one for every ward in Wales to get an extra police person. So um, when people go to the ballot box, when they look at the sort of country they want to live in, the sort of things they want for their communities, the sort of life they want, it ain't coming from the Tories. It's just Brexit, Brexit, Brexit from the Tories. The Tories don't care about anything. They do, they've not cared about anything else. And I think it's going to be, you know, very difficult for Theresa May to continue with this strong and stable nonsense. She sounds like a, an out-of-control Dalek sometimes, <laughs> uh, you know, repeating the same diatribe. There is nothing be beneath it. I'd like to see Theresa May say what that is going to actually mean. So what does what it translate Corbyn into? What's saying then? What's he promising? Well, look, we, you know, Christina can say, but we've, we've out, laid out our policies. We've laid out our approach to Brexit. We've done it in far more detail than the Tories have done it. And they're the ones supposedly going off to negotiate it. Um, I think there's a trick in here that's being played on the British people. And that is, Theresa May is not saying what her position is. So when, if she's Prime Minister and she has to go and negotiate it, she's got nothing to com we've got nothing to compare it to when she comes back and she will have failed. But she can't show her cards because she has to negotiate with 27 other countries? Well, uh, we know what the negotiating points are. She should say what she's intending to bring back for us, the British people. That's what she's not saying. What do you think she should bring back, Christina? Well, I think it should be a sensible Brexit. Not a hard Brexit or a soft Brexit, but a sensible Brexit. A sensible deal for the people of the UK. We're going out. The referendum's been held. There's no going back. Article, Article 50's gone through. The Great Repeal Bill is what we will have a chance to amend. And we want to know what his starting position is so we can actually look at it and amend it. And when is that going to happen now? Well, um, the Queen's speech, I think, is on the 19th of June. So when we, when we go back... Um, you could we'll... argue that the biggest election facing us now is in the next few days, isn't it, in mm -hmm. France? When is that... Coming oh, I think imminent. that's Sunday, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Because it's been suggested, hasn't it, it's like as if, you, as if we were in the UK and we were looking at a picture where there's no um, Labour Party and no Conservative Party standing. And really, even in the UK, we're in this sort of almost kaleidoscope situation where everything's fragmenting and changing before our eyes. These are very interesting times, Gaynor. I can't remember times like them, Rob. No. And, um, you know, we have an opportunity now to put our policies to the country. So we're not afraid of the election. Yes, as Calvin said, it's a mountain to climb, but we're up for the fight. We're up for the challenge. And we've put forward very good policies, as Robert said. Minimum wage, range it to, to, uh, raising it to £10. The problem we have is we've had seven years of Tory austerity policies that they've chosen to enforce on the country. They could have gone a different way and invested. It's mm. all very well talking about the minimum wage, for example, going up to £10. And... A lot of us would struggle to survive on £10 an hour. And as I was in the local hairdressers in Pyle the other day, and she was telling me that how hard it is to maintain paying a living wage to her, um, her hairdressers and how worried she is if, if people aren't coming in, so she has to drive the prices down, and that in turn then she can't pay more than the living wage to some of them. My daughter's a hairdresser, mm. as you know, Gaynor, mm. and she has to be self-employed. Mm. That's the problem. 
and we've got to get around that because that's just a dodge for employers not to employ people. But a lot of businesses rate. aren't turning over enough. They'd like to pay more than the minimum Well, that's rate. a challenge, and the Welsh Government has got in place lots of tax breaks for businesses. We and that's just a strong country, country to have a strong economy. economy. That, that was the argument for the minimum wage. You know, the Tories fought the minimum wage every step of the way, where they said if you, in, if you introduce a minimum wage, you will kill small businesses. But the reality was the government was having to pay a top-up to allow businesses to pay poverty wages at that time. People working, if you remember, a few years back for just a pound an hour. That is not the sort of country we should be living in, right? Labour changed that. and Labour is now saying, actually, we've got, we've got the minimum wage. We want a decent living wage. And that's what we're proposing. And again, if it's introduced correctly, as we did with the minimum wage, it will work. And it will lift people out of poverty. Mm. You know, there's no point in you paying a wage that you can't live on. That, that helps nobody. Oh, it's immoral, really, isn't it? Well, the beauty of it, I guess, as well, is if, you know, the ten, £10 an hour for 18-year-olds and above, 18-year-olds and above spend, don't they? They don't save, they spend, so, you know, it's... it's, it's exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It would make a huge difference. My daughter's among, among people who would benefit. But where is the money going to come from? If we haven't got a strong economy, if we haven't got a strong pay, base and a strong trading position with Europe, where is the money going to come from? Well, that's up to Theresa May. I mean... Oh, well, you're hoping it'll be up to Jeremy Corbyn, surely? <laughs> no, yeah. we're talking about the negotiating position now, aren't we? So she must have it in her mind what she's negotiating for. Well, it for. depends who wins and the election. And she said um, that she doesn't think that we should pay a divorce settlement, but she wants to form a new trade deal at the same time. To me, that's bigamy. But you she... know, you get divorced first before you So you're expecting on. Theresa May to win the general election? No, I didn't say that, Gainer. So what would Jeremy Corbyn be arguing for? A sensible Brexit and we've got investment uh, at, at the front of our manifesto and what we're doing in Wales we will have a Wales specific manifesto that will appeal to the people of Wales. Might I be allowed to ask a question about farmers because farmers get 80% of their income from um, the common agricultural policy as it stands. In 40 years of reporting I haven't seen much of the UK government standing up and, and feeding farmers, supporting farmers. No when they're given no commitment to do so. Uh, I think that, that's the point here. We've, we said at the time of Brexit, look, we get um, a relatively good share of the money coming out of Europe currently, um, and we are guaranteed that. Um, there is no guarantee that when we've exited Europe, and this is one of the questions that we do need Theresa May to answer as part of what she proposes to do if she's the person negotiating, will she be guaranteeing the same money coming from the UK government to the farmers who rely on it so that they can sustain their incomes? It's a simple question to answer. I say yes or no. Either she's going to do it or she isn't. Again, as, as uh, Christina said, you know, a sensible Brexit. Does Theresa May want us, if she's the person negotiating it, does, does, does Theresa May going to be arguing for us to be part of the single market? And if so, on what terms? She could lay those out. Um, because, again, outside of the single market, as you said, that would be a killer for us in terms of jobs. We don't want people to be unemployed. And, you know, outside of the single market, with no access for us to sell our goods, for our businesses to sell our goods to Europe, that is going to cost people jobs. And, and if, the tariffs if, that would be imposed. If we could just change the subject. I think we've got some breaking news, haven't we? The first Labour mayor of, is it Liverpool? Yeah, the Metro mayor, yeah. Yeah. So, Fantastic news. So, that's good news for you. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we just go back to the swing, Christina, that we were talking about at the start, obviously, it wasn't as severe as predicted, but there still was a swing. Is this an excuse for Labour, the Labour Party to find another gear with the run-up to the general election and ramp it up even more? No, it's, it's not an excuse, Henry. Uh, our activists, they're highly motivated, and we can build off the platform of the results last night and today and move forward. And we're determined to get out there and fight for every vote. Uh, I'm starting a 40-seat challenge tomorrow where I'm going to visit every parliamentary seat in Wales and take the message and motivate our activists. What is fresh? How are you going to freshen up your message? How are you going to re um voters? Because at the moment, they're, they're still not coming out in droves for Labour. Well, well, we've got some tremendous policies that we, we've already announced. Are you selling them properly? Well, um, yes. Um, we've, you know, we've got to get our message out there. I think, and, I mean, Rob has succeeded in getting the message through in Swansea. I think, look, you, you had some great announcements over the last week or so in the run-up to the local elections, which were national announcements. You look at the polls, we rose in the polls by over 5%, 3.5%. Uh, 
through those announcements alone, and that's before our manifesto is published. You know, I think, the, as Christina said, the strong messages, as long as they are put out there in the right way, it's an alternative for people to vote for, and I think okay. people will find well, that attractive. Next week, we'll be discussing the French election. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. After the break, Christina's going to be staying with us, and Tom Williams is going to come and join us, and he's going to sing the show out. Look forward to that.
Welcome back to your final part of today on Bay TV. I'm Henry Darby Cook and this is Gaynor Morgan. And we're back and Christina Reese has stayed with us, thankfully, and Tom's also here. He joined us singing and music in the most amazing way. Tom, what is it about your name? We've, we haven't been good on names oh, yeah. today. Well, my real name is Tom Emlyn Williams, but just for music, I dropped the Williams just right. to be less generic. So you know, you're Tom? Tom Emlyn. Oh, okay. E-M-L-Y-N. Right. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. So obviously today is a big political day, Tom. You have political songs, don't you? Yeah, um, I didn't really play... The first song I played wasn't really a very political one, but I have, I have some songs about, um, about financial issues, and I, I write a lot about characters around Swansea, so I've got a song about T. Cozy Pete, the well-known tramp who mm -hmm. used to live in Swansea, and, and uh, everyone, most of the people in Swansea talk to him at some point, but he died a couple of years ago. So um, I tend to write about things like that. And, so are you very politically motivated? Uh, fairly, yeah. Since the last couple of years, I've started to get more and more interested in politics. I think music can be an incredibly useful thing, you know, like the Billy Bragg, Woody Guthrie, Bob Dylan sort of way. Um, but where you started, isn't it, Christina? Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely love Bob Dylan. He's one of my heroes, and I haven't seen him yet, but um, Tom's seen him three times, so I'm really <laughs> jealous, <laughs> very envious. Oh, it's, yeah, it's amazing, you know. It's very refreshing to meet, to meet a young person who's quite so engaged in, in politics. Yeah, very politically aware. We had a, a chat in what, uh, the green room <laughs> before we came in, and um, it was really refreshing uh, to hear a young man with such good, uh, good soundings on politics. For me, it's all about a poetic tradition as well, um, kind of the personal and the political at the same time, and because politics obviously influences everybody's lives in, in a very... Mm. In intense way, you know, so... Uh, You're a student at the moment, what are you studying? Uh, no, I've had... I did a degree in English in uh, Bangor, North Wales, um, and then I've had a few years out, so I've just been pursuing music, which... Uh, it's not always easy. Um, Nothing's easy. Nothing's easy. Nothing yeah. that's worth when, um, doing is easy. When I used to well, yeah. coach uh, children in squash, you know, they used to say, Chris, what are you involved with politics for? What does that mean? You know, that's such a big, big word. And I'd say, no, it's about... Potholes in the road, have you got any potholes? Yeah, I said, that's politics, that's local government. Do your parents work? No, well, they get benefits from the state. That's the UK government. And when you explain it like that, they really understand. But it's not in their curriculum, and we've had this conversation before, mm. and it needs to be. People and isn't the word politics, it doesn't come from people? Mm -hmm. Originally from the Latin or something. Is it, people forget that politics is about you and me and it's an, all of us. It's an everyday event, you mm. know. Um, our lives are surrounded by politics, and it's not something sort of up there in the sky. It's everyday experiences. Tom, yeah. well, when it comes to local elections, were, were you engaged with last night? Yeah, I, I did vote, yeah. I voted, I voted Labour, but um, I think it's quite an intense time politically, and um, I think music is going to be quite important if, if people can find songs that they connect with and if people are writing and creating works of art that are kind of responding to this. But an awful lot of younger well. people, they don't really get the local elections. Yeah, well, it's quite a different um, different side of it, isn't it? Mm. But, I think um, that the local elections in many ways are very important because it affects everyone's lives. And councillors are at the cutting edge delivering public services and trying to improve people's lives. As you go up the scale then, the Welsh Government are sort of um, responsible for uh, giving the budget to local elections. And then in the UK Government, we block fund the, um, the uh, Welsh Assembly, the Welsh Government. So it comes down like that. And you have to explain it, because it's, it's not easy to understand. But a lot of young people wouldn't directly be paying rates, and they wouldn't directly be... <laughs> they'd, it's the mum and dad but putting out the rubbish bins. Students, grants, they pay their fees. But I'm not sure that they see it in that way. Do, what, do you, what do you think, what, oh, and your peers? Um, I think everyone lives in a bubble, you know? I think most of my friends tend to be fairly aware. But um, certainly when I was a student, I, didn't, I was a lot less aware. Than, I think having some actual life experience has really helped me understand the So what issues, are the things that would wind you up that encouraged you to vote yesterday? Well, it's just the, the growing inequality, uh, inequality in this country and in, in the West in general, and I think... Um, I think the, the issue with the ta taxation and how the, the rich have these massive tax offshore tax islands, you know, that it just doesn't seem right. And I think we should aspire to live in a country that's a better place instead of continuing. I, th to I think that's the point. And Christina, you'd really be at the, at, the, at the fighting edge of this. Or you're the person that, that we would ask to be at the fighting edge with this. 
just isn't fair that some people are on the minimum wage and then at the other end of the scale we've got people like Google and these mm -hmm. mega rich people and, and in the middle I suppose the middle class is again really mm -hmm. struggling. I mean one of our policies is to reduce the pay gap um, to 20 to 1 so in any corporation the, uh, the person that gets paid the most it should only be 20, 20 times the person who gets paid the least. Sounds fair enough. And that's how equality should work. And I'm all for cooperatives as well. I think that, you know, people should have ownership in companies. But in the real world, in a capitalist society, a marketplace economy, how are you going to get that to work? How do you mean, how do you get it to work? Well, how, how are you going to, to would you pass um, a, an Act of Parliament to, to say that the CEO can only have 20 times the minimum work? Yeah, we'd legislate. We'd obviously ask for voluntary um, cooperation, but we have to legislate at the end of the day because you know, Gaynor, that there's lots of tax avoidance and tax evasion going on. And, uh, That'll as, always continue, though. Well, it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be that way. If people like you and I pay our taxes, then why should big companies get away with it? Mm. We're all fighting for a braver, fairer world. We are. Just before we get you to play us out, Tom, where are you, have you got a busy summer like most musicians? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, recording a solo album at the moment. I've been experimenting with um, using analog formats and, and uh, four-track cassette tape recording. So uh, that's been having, getting a bit of a warmer sound. Um, I've got a lot of gigs coming up. Um, I'm playing in St. Uh, at a poetry event on the 13th of May. In, Do you um, write poetry as well, Tom? Uh, I used to more, but I'm, I'm going to be doing some in my Master's, yeah. Great so, stuff. Yeah. Um, and Cinema and & Co on the June 23rd. So We look forward to all that then. Yeah. If you want to go and get ready to play us out, and we'll uh, close the much. show. Thank you. And we've got a newfound fan, I think, Christina. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you to all our guests yes. today, and to all thank our viewers for watching yeah. us, especially those who have tuned in for our Talking Pictures afternoon matinee coming up next on Bay. And today, it's the 1952 comedy Sleeping Car to Trieste, starring Gene Kent. And with that, all I've got to say is, Tom, take it away. Feeling low, the clouds are hanging down But the autumn air is lovely And I would quote Keats if I could remember any Coughing up fragments of yesterday's songs High and dry, so don't let me down a penny into my case The mouth of the river opens and closes in Wine Street room the temperature rises There is no taste That's not worth acquiring There is no beauty That's not worth admiring I've been running around And chasing my tail For too long on the streets Of this sea-bitten town No one is born With a waterproof mind And Swansea people Are made of rain under the weather, under the weather Clouds hanging over my face Under the weather, under the weather Drop a penny into my case Ambition is pitiful Now you're gone, now you're gone, now you're gone 
Just one more riddle to solve Now you're gone, now you're gone, now you're gone And I'm still here singing these songs Under the weather Under the weather Under the weather